Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for our sophomore Adobe Digital Media Academy project presentations. My name is Anna Glover DeBrine, and I'm the Academy Coordinator here at Middle Creek High School. Before we begin, I would like to thank our principal, Lacey Peckham, our admin team, teachers, Academy parents, and our past and current Academy students for joining us today. I would also like to thank Joanne Honeycutt, Gail McDougall, and Phil Weiss for their support in our academies. Last but not least, I would like to thank our business partners who have given our students an opportunity to work with real world clients. I also want to recognize our academy teachers, Mr. Petty and Ms. De Silva for all the work they have done on this project with the students. They have spent long hours with them and have created a real world work experience. At this time, I would like to turn it over to our sophomore Adobe Digital Media Academy students. Welcome to the sophomore Adobe Digital Media Academy class presentation. For this project, we are given the opportunity to work with local business owners who are in need of graphic design work. We learned about the principles of logo design. We learned that a good logo should be simple, memorable, timeless, versatile, and appropriate. From here, we were paired with a local business and began the process of working with our client. Once we had an understanding of our client's visions, we got to work in teams to create our graphic elements. At this time, I would like to hand it over to our first team. Hello, my name is Kendall Brown, and these are my teammates, Jordan Zimogen and Connor Hibbard. For this project, we had the privilege of working with the Fairview Fire Department to create a t-shirt design that the department can use to raise money to purchase new tools. Our goals were to create a logo that caters to a wide demographic, has a timeless design, and is something that the firefighters themselves would be proud to wear. We started the process of creating an inspiration board by looking at other fire department logo and t-shirt designs. We noticed that most concepts consisted of fire-related imagery, crests, and tools used by firefighters. We would reference this inspiration board when we would create our rough draft sketches later in our process. We then spoke with Mr. Orlowski and Mr. Mikaloon, who are Fairview firefighters, over the phone and email to gather ideas and get a feel for their department's vision. We learned that they wanted a t-shirt that highlights the importance of community to the Fairview Fire Department and captures imagery that represents their work. From this, we were able to create a brand identity document, which includes word association, image association, font choice, and color palette. This was used as our main source of reference throughout our creative process and helped us effectively focus our design. Here are some of our team's initial sketches. As you can see, we like the Maltese cross in our design, which symbolizes luck. We also had some, we also liked fire helmets in the center of our logo, along with full body shots and headshots of fighter fighters. We each then chose our three favorite sketches to turn into thumbnails. For my first sketch on the left, I incorporated the strong and stoic side profile of a firefighter with the back of his head gear curving around to give the logo a circular appearance. It also ends in the nozzle of a fire hose to show equipment commonly used in the profession. To add balance and complete the look, I added a vertical 1010 in order to allude to the location of the department. For my second logo, I went with the silhouette of a fire truck with the doors and windows produced by a negative space shaped as a 1010. The ladder is raised on the truck in order to show that the department is always prepared and, and to make it more recognizable. For my third logo, I went with the line art style fire hydrant with the 10 stacked on top of each other uh, and the elements are connected to the text Fairview to drop the name of the location right there in the graphic. For my first sketch, I wanted to reinvent the caduceus symbol by incorporating firefighting elements. As you can see, the snakes now hoses, the wings are now flames, and the words 1010 sit proudly on top of the ladder. For my second sketch, I wanted to change some of the letters that spell out Fairview Fire Department to capture some common tools used by firefighters, including a fire axe, a halogen tool, and a fire extinguisher. The letters that were not changed are a time-honored font used by most fire stations to add to the theme. 
My third sketch is a shield-shaped badge and logo, symbolizing the protection they offer to their community. Inside the traditional Maltese cross are the words 1010 and Fairy Fire, while inside the medallion are tools used for fighting fire, including a helmet centered to finish the look. For my first sketch, I wanted to incorporate a badge look to my design, along with adding a flame to show an image as affiliated with the work they do. Inside the flame, there are letters 1010 as a nod to their 58-year history on 1010 Road. For my last two sketches, I wanted to capture the value of community to the Fairview Fire Department. For each of these, I drew two people, a citizen and a firefighter. One social stays in the background, and the other spotlights their inception date, 1963. We sent these logos to our client for feedback. Once we got word on which designs they liked most, we got into Adobe Illustrator in order to create digital versions. Over the course of a month, we worked diligently on our t-shirt designs. During this process, we worked together and learned multiple skills that we will need later in the work field, such as communicating efficiently with our clients and our peers. My final design was my third idea. I utilized elements of stroke and fill with the hydrant and the tens appearing as only line art, but the Fairview text being filled completely. As for the client's request, I added more detail in the fire hydrant to make it more instantly recognizable. Out of the three logos I sent, art clients liked the one with the symbols and tools best. They both liked the design concept, but wondered about adding a fire truck or flames in the background, noting that the final call was mine. I decided against adding the fire truck or flames, thinking that it would make the logo too busy. Instead, I spruced up the logo by fixing leveling issues and making all the letters look more uniform and even. I also fixed the symbols and tools to make the logo look more crisp. The logos I digitized were the two community-focused concepts. I began thinking of colors and how I could incorporate these details while keeping it simple, especially with the fire station in the background. I decided to create a simple outline of the fire station in order to draw attention to the people in the foreground. The other one symbolizes a firefighter reaching out to a civilian in order to represent their significance in the community. We sent these digital designs to our clients in order for them to choose from, and they decided on the two seen here. After this, we began working on our t-shirt mock-ups. Our clients wanted the option to choose between the logo on the front and the lapel and the logo on the back. So we sent them four mock-ups in total. Our client will now take these mock-ups to a council for them to make the final decision. We are honored to have been able to work with the Fairview Fire Department. And we'd like to thank Mr. Orlowski and Mr. McAloon for providing us with this opportunity. Uh, and we would like to see the outcomes Soon. Let's pass it over to the next group. Hello, my name is Chloe Miller, and these are my teammates, Ryan Allard and Autumn Parrish. We were given the opportunity to work with a local pest control business, New Horizon Pest Solutions. In the initial call with our client, Mr. Hood, we learned a lot about our company and what they wanted us to create. From there, we made ourselves three goals to create this project. We wanted to establish a color scheme, create simple and abstract designs, and follow the company's goals. Our group then looked at other pest control companies to see how they incorporated elements in their logos. When we saw these elements that they used, we saw how we saw we looked at the elements that we wanted to use to make our brands recognizable. During our production phase, looking at these elements, we started brainstorming what we wanted our logos to incorporate. We then corresponded with Mr. Hood along with our peers and each other. For our brand identity document, we took the initial color scheme of blue and yellow that Mr. Hood had given us and also looked up word connotations and associations along with font choices to help us inspire our upcoming logos. We then created initial sketches, incorporating elements to create a more abstract design, while also trying to keep it recognizable to pest control. The balance of these two ideas was the main part of our design process. We created many different sketches, combining some and scrapping some all together until we ended up with something that we liked. We then sent them off to Mr. Hood, our client, to, for him to figure out which ones would become thumbnail sketches. We then created our thumbnail sketches. These had to be refined and polished as they had a chance of becoming the final design. For my first design, I included sun and bug themes. I included a sun rising over the side of the home to represent the New Horizons aspect of the name. And for my second design, 
I included a honeycomb, which represents insects like bees without inciting any of the negative connotations that might go along with that. And for my third design, I included tools that might be commonly used by pest control companies. These are my thumbnail designs. My main goal was to find a way to incorporate text with the design so that the logo was recognizable and memorable. As you can see in my first two thumbnails, I used a bug to represent pest solutions and a sun to represent New Horizon. For my final logo, I used the initial idea that Mr. Hood has sent us to represent the N in New Horizon. For each logo, I decided to add the company name along with the location on the side. For my thumbnails, I wanted to simply and suddenly include the idea of honeycomb as it represents pests such as bees. I also wanted to represent the meaning of the name New Horizon, so I added a sun to my logos. From there, we sent our thumbnails to our client, Mr. Hood, for him to decide which ones he wanted us to put in Adobe Illustrator. From there, we got to work, starting with black and white images, adding color as needed, and making many iterations on the way. For my logo, I started with a honeycomb border, as it represents pests such as bees, while also keeping the design simple, memorable, and timeless. The home in the middle represents what the company is protecting with the name New Horizon Pest Solutions in the bottom. For my design, I focus on simplicity, with the house representing the job site and the people that will be helped by our client's company. I also included the sun rising over the side of the home, which again represents the New Horizons part of the name. These elements come together to create a design that is simple and memorable towards a pest control company. For my design, I created a sun to represent the horizon imagery. My, when, creating the, when creating the sun, I used long and short rays to identify the sun better. After adding in our color scheme, I decided to make pest solutions bigger because New Horizon had already been captured with the sun. From there, our client, Mr. Hood, wanted to go in a different direction. He wanted to change the color scheme to blue and red, keep, keeping the idea of a home with a roof and a floor, keeping the name New Horizon in the middle. We put our final logo on a mock-up of a letterhead and a business card. This is essential for our client to show them what it will look like in a professional and for branding purposes. We would now like to personally thank Mr. Hood for giving this amazing opportunity. We've learned so many things throughout this process that we can use in everyday life and throughout our workforce. We'd now like to hand it off to our next group. Hello, my name is Josie Frankie, and these are my teammates Grace and I and Kayla McComas. Together, we work with the Cub Scouts Pack 202 coordinator, Mr. Eric Withrow, to create a new graphic design for their t-shirts. We started by looking for inspiration and found that we wanted to include the Pinewood Derby and camping, since these are both important traditions in Cub Scout Pack history. Additionally, we wanted to include campfires, roasting marshmallows, and nature. We wanted our logo to be simple, easily recognizable, and appealing to the Pack 202 Scouts. One of the most important pieces of the design process was the creation of the brand identity document. We started this process by calling Mr. Withrow to ask about the key components that he wanted us to include on the t-shirt design. We then added word and image associations, a font, and a color palette to make sure we had consistency through our design. In our initial sketches, we wanted to create a design that was both simple and memorable. We wanted to include the Pinewood Derby and North Carolina Mountains in order to portray our theme of a natural setting that we associate with the Cub Scouts. We also try to create different and unique designs in order to create variety in our sketches. And from here, we chose our three favorite designs and moved to create them in two thumbnails. My first design on the left depicts a bear cub riding on a derby car with mountains in the background. This logo is definitely not the simplest, but it is cute, memorable, and emphasizes that these are the Cub Scouts. For my design in the middle, I wanted the design element to be inside of the pack number. So I put mountains inside of the logo that can also be seen as a tent and I wanted to keep a bear element in the design, so I added ears onto the zero. For my last design on the right, I wanted to include the Pinewood Derby track with a car and mounds in the background. Mounds can be seen as tents, just like they are in the second, so I included the car because it has a better chance of being seen when shrunken down. In my first design, I had the car, derby car going down the front of the mountain. Since I knew that the scout's pack number was 202, I wanted to include this in the design, so I put the mountain inside of the zero. To keep the derby idea going, I made the tooth checker to symbolize racing. In my second design, I kept the derby car racing down the front of the mountain, 
but in this design, I made the mountains into tents to show the adventurous spirit of the Cub Scouts. In my third design, I went with the campfire design. This shows the warm and fun feeling of the Cub Scouts. In each of my thumbnails, I worked to create elements that would represent multiple images. For example, in my first thumbnail, I used the right side of the mountain to resemble a racetrack for the Cub Scout cars. In my second thumbnail, I used the peak of the mountain to look like an A in pack. And in my third thumbnail, I used the middle triangle to represent both a tent and a mountain. The opening for the tent resembles a racetrack for the derby car, and the flipped corner of the tent looks like an A for pack. I also put a rhombus in the zero of 202 to represent the badges of the Cub Scouts wear. And lastly, I added mountains into the background to tie it all together. Once Mr. Withrow picked his favorite designs, we brought them into Adobe Illustrator. For my design, I changed the mountains in the background to grandfather, using an image I found as the inspiration. The outline, which was previously a circle, I changed into a bear cup head, and I wanted to make a focal point the Pinewood Derby track. And after some feedback from my team, I decided to add some pine trees and tents to give the design a camping feel. My goal was to make a logo that captured the adventurous spirit of the Cub Scouts. So after receiving feedback and reflecting, I moved into Adobe Illustrator to further my campfire design. I made sure to separate the campfire from the mountain to make sure it was not mistaken for a forest fire. There are many small details in my design, such as the marshmallows, which show the warmth and fun of the Cub Scouts, and the mountains, which are made to resemble Chimney Mountain. After receiving feedback from Mr. Wither and his team, I moved into Adobe Illustrator and further developed my thumbnail into a digital design. I wanted simplicity in this design, so I decided to use the outline of the three mountains to create a side-by-side -side racetrack for the derby cars that resembles the Pinewood Derby. As you can see, Pack 202 fits perfectly at the bottom of the first mountain to create a visually appealing overall design. Mr. Withrow and other scout coordinators voted and decided to go with this design for their final. They asked if we could remove the bear cup ears, and we wanted this design to capture the Cub Scout experience with images of the Pinewood Derby, Grandfather Mountain, tents, and pine trees. Once our client picked a shirt color, we created a mock-up. Mr. Withrow decided to go with a burnt orange and a green, and as you can see, those colors work well with our design and met all of our initial goals. We spent a fair amount of time on this project to make sure that our customer was happy, since this was our first time working with an actual business. The school provided us with the technology and materials needed to make this possible. We are delighted with the outcome and had so much fun with this project. We would like to give a special thank you to Mr. Eric Witherow and Mr. Mark Desilon for letting us work with them on this project, and we hope that the Cub Scouts Pack 202 love the final design as much as we do. We would now like to pass it on to the next team. My name is Warlock Rogers, and these are my teammates, Rhea Teague and Haley Simpson. We had the opportunity to work with Mr. Bittner and his business, Next Level Home Maintenance, to create a 360 wrap for his work trailer. We wanted to understand the basic idea of what a wrap was since none of us have ever created one before. We looked at different backs, sides, and fronts of different trailers. After our call with Mr. Bittner, he offered to bring his trailer over for us to visualize the layouts of our designs. We took multiple pictures and measurements and talked about what he envisioned for the wrap as a whole. Our client provided us with the company logo and color scheme. And with this information, we created our brand identity document, which we followed throughout the entirety of the project. This information was vital to the consistency of our designs and helped with the process of the wrap. Now that we knew what our client wanted, we began making our initial sketches. Once we were happy with some of them, we worked as a team to combine different concepts from each of ours and moved on to our thumbnails. For my first set of designs, I focused on the side of the trailer with the door. The design on the, on the left was my first design and mostly experimental, but I ended up building off of it. The next two designs helped me visualize exactly what I was doing. Next, I chose to focus on the so side that had two ladders on it. This side proved to be a challenge because the ladders took up a lot of valuable space. My designs ended up being very simple because of that. Finally, I chose to focus on the back of the trailer where I wanted to have the most information. The design, the design on the left, I focused on the graphic elements over the text, contrary to the, the design on the right where I built the graphic elements around my text. When making my sketches, I started off with the door side. I liked the idea of having a level in between next level and home maintenance. 
I also like the idea of having a paint spill with the slogan inside. When it came to the latter side, I ended up going back to the paint spill idea, as even when it's covered up, it's easy enough to understand. I also wanted to include tools in my design. Finally, I designed the back. For the back, I wanted to highlight some of the services that Mr. Bittner offers. Mr. Bittner also thought of the idea of having an inside look, so I tried to include that as well. For my sketches of the door side, I created a tool board holding some commonly used tools along with a hard hat representing the construction part of Mr. Bittner's business. Beneath is important information, such as the company name, logo, and phone number. Additionally, his brand slogan is written underneath, revealing the saying, bringing your home to the next level, which we came up with for his business. On the latter side, I chose to go with a simplistic yet informative design, showing just some of the things Mr. Bittner offers. This includes things like remodeling, wood flooring installation, painting, and more. My designs on the back were made to be effective, mainly due to the location, in that while driving by the trailer, you may be behind it and can get most of your information from there. Because of this, I kept the same appearance on the door side of the level and text that was on the door side as well, with the list of services offered at next level underneath. Once we all finished our sketches and consulted with Mr. Bittner to, to receive his input, we made our designs digitally using Adobe Illustrator. I used some of the same assets from my thumbnail sketches with some minor adjustments to make them not only better fit the space, but also more simple. I also made an outline to make sure that everything would be placed correctly and not be cut off. I tried to keep my design cohesive with each side by using some of the same assets, like the wrench, the level, and the paint stroke going along the back and the side of the trailer, painting on the list of services that he offers. After making my sketches, I moved on to my digital designs. For my digital designs, Mr. Bittner liked the idea of having the paint spill, so I went in that direction for the door side. When it came to the back, I decided not to go with the inside look and instead replaced that with a cluster of tools. For the last ladder side, Mr. Bittner already used the paint spill idea on the door side, so I went with a more simple design. After digitally creating my sketches in Adobe Illustrator, I wasn't fond of what I'd come up with and began brainstorming other ideas. I played around with some small designs I had for each side and decided to add or change certain things. For example, I changed the initial tool pattern to the strip all the way around the top to add a cohesive element to all sides. We communicated with Mr. Bittner constantly for his input and made revisions as necessary. We also designed the, back, the front of the trailer, but as this is harder to see, we ended up just putting the logo on the face of it. Finally, we submitted our final designs to Mr. Bittner. He liked Haley's design the best because of the cohesive blue pattern across the top. We ended up making a couple of changes like adding the logo and overall just making the design simpler. We also made our mock-ups because we wanted to see exactly what it would look like in real life. We went into Photoshop and messed around with blending modes and then made minor adjustments from there. After weeks of perfecting our design, we are very proud of the outcome and we had so much fun being part of this opportunity. We would like to thank Mr. Bob Bittner from Next Level Home Maintenance for his patience and input during this entire process. We will now hand it off to the next team. Hello, my name is Jaden McKenzie, and these are my teammates, Sarah Jones and Ray Schrader. We were given the opportunity to create a logo design for the company All Seasons Homes. We started by looking at other real estate logos to, to, find, inspiration, to find inspiration for the ones that we'd be creating. We then, t we then had a conversation with the company's owner, Ms. Autumn Hutchinson, in order to gather information about the company and to get her vision for the logos we would be designing. We then took this information and created our brand identity documents that we would use throughout this process as our project as our main point of reference. Between the three of us, we came up with a wide assortment of sketches. We wanted something that stuck out from the competition while at the same time fit our clients' needs. A lot of our sketches included a house and the idea of seasons. When we finished brainstorming and sketching, 
we picked three of our best sketches based on design and concept. After picking our three, we proceeded to finalize them into thumbnails. Out of my initial sketches, I chose the three that you see here. My first thumbnail incorporates the idea of a house and key combined, evoking the feeling of excitement with the home purchase and opening new doors. My second thumbnail includes a house with wind and leaves, representing how people move as time goes and, and how it's just like the seasons. My third thumbnail shows a house with a tree growing out of the roof, symbolizing family generations growing and creating memories. From my initial sketches, I tried different roof pitches, angles, and different positions of the sun. I focused on simplicity with my logos since Ms. Hutchinson wanted a versatile design that could be clearly seen, a versatile design that could, could, that could be utilized in multiple different ways. I also focused with image and text logos so that the company name could be clearly seen alongside the design. My goal when creating my thumbnails was to be as simple as possible while also including as much detail as I can. To do this, I added roof pitches in all of my designs to help consumers understand that All Seasons Homes works in real estate. We then sent our thumbnails to our client. However, she had just given birth, thus giving us the creative freedom to choose which thumbnails we develop further into Illustrator. From my initial sketches, I chose this design because it was memorable, recognizable, and fit our client's needs. The Arc of the Sun symbolizes the seasons, a nod to the company name while the house clearly captures the company's purpose. Out of all of my thumbnails, I ended up choosing this one. Being a real estate company, I wanted to include the two roof pitches you see here, and to add detail, I added the na name of the company, establishment date, and where they based. Out of my three thumbnails, I chose my second one. I thought it captured the image of all seasons homes the best. The house is representative of, is, representative of real estate and the wind and leaves alludes to the season to the changing of seasons communication was key throughout our work when we were creating the logo for all seasons homes we spent a lot of time discussing a variety of ideas designs and colors amongst each other in the end our client chose this logo because it fit the company's image and ideals the best the logo is timeless, easy to understand, and clearly represents what All Seasons Homes provides as a company. With the final logo decided, we created two mock-ups consisting of a business card and a letterhead to show how the logo could be utilized in a professional setting. We enjoyed creating our logos while also learning more about the design process along the way. Again, we'd like to thank Ms. Autumn Hutchinson for the opportunity to create a logo design for All Seasons Homes. We are all very excited to have accomplished our client's goals in creating a graphical logo, t-shirt design, or trailer wrap to promote or showcase their business. We all learn valuable skills in teamwork and communication during this process. On behalf of all of our teams, we'd like to thank you for your time and attention. Thank you to the local businesses for providing us with the opportunity to work with you. We are honored to have been able to create something useful and meaningful to each one of your businesses. This concludes the sophomore Adobe Digital Media Academy local business design campaign for Middle Creek High School. We would now like to open the floor to any questions or comments. All right, we're first going to open it up to questions that are here for anybody, student, parent, business industry person. Uh, administrator, anybody would like to make a question to anybody in the group up here or anybody that might have a comment after we get done in-house and we're going to take some questions for those who are joining us virtually as well. Uh, okay, there we go. 
Um, first of all, you guys did absolutely amazing. Um, so the question I had, it was kind of for anyone that wants to answer. Um, but during this process, what was the biggest issue you guys ran into and how did you fix it? I know personally for our group, it was actually designing a trailer wrap. None of us had, at the beginning, none of us knew what a trailer wrap was. So actually creating one was a long process and we had to go over measurements over and over again and fix measurements because we messed them up multiple times. And it was, it was just a long process that took a lot of trial and error. I'll say that our biggest issue was coming up with inspiration because not a lot of us had experience in real estate. So figuring out what other competition looked like and then designing our own was the biggest issue. Hi, I don't really have a question. I just want to compliment you guys on what a great job you guys did. We got to do that last year and we know it's not easy, especially presenting. We got to do it all virtually and it was a lot easier than it was just to stand in front of people. Because personally, I know speaking in front of a big crowd is not easy and it takes a lot out of you. And you guys did really well. And I also want to compliment those of you who did Fairview Fire Department. I think that they came out really nicely. And I love the simplistic designs you guys came up with. And they're definitely going to be uh, very, in well, I just lost my words. They're definitely going to be very appreciative of all the designs you came up with. Because I know personally, they do use those shirts a lot. And it's a big fundraiser for them. And then those of you who did the trailer wraps. I'm very proud of you guys as well because that is not an easy feat to do. That's something new and I would not have had any idea what to do with that either. So good job to all of you guys. Thank you so much. Hi, you guys did so well. Your presenting skills are amazing. And yeah, all of your, every single group had incredible logos and products and deliverables, especially the trailer wrap. I've got to commend you guys for that. That seems incredibly difficult to figure out. And it came out really well. Um, I had a question specifically for Autumn Parish because, yeah, <laughs> um, I noticed in your sketches you started with a bug and a sun and then you removed the bug completely. And I just wanted to ask why. Well, originally, Mr. Hood said that he didn't want any pests part in it because it had negative connotations with the logo design but for us we our teacher said maybe because he's never done a logo before maybe include a bug to see how he liked it so I had bugs originally in my thumbnails but from his critiques and um emailing him back and forth I um ended up going with the sun okay thank you So I'm the inventor of this difficult trailer wrap. And uh, you guys did just an amazing job. And I was so impressed uh, with not only uh, the outcome at the end, but the whole process and your professionalism and how you've handled yourself. And I could not be more proud of a bunch of uh, young people standing on the stage today than I am right now. So uh, thank you all for just a tremendous job and the uh, dedication you did to making great uh, products for uh, all the businesses in the area. Thank you so much. Well, first I'd like to say uh, you all did a phenomenal job. Um, I'm very impressed. I do have a question though, um, going through this whole process and I'm sure you all face plenty of challenges. What would you do differently in your approach um, basically based off of your experience and what you all learned going through this. So for our design, we came up with a lot of like really cute and fun ideas. And for mine, I think I would add back the little cub ears because I thought those were really fun and they really enhanced the idea that these are the Cub Scouts. Um, I would definitely try to incorporate more of a pest control situation with our logo. But I really like the way our final logo turned out throughout all, how it completely changed from all of our initial ideas. But I think that was one part of the whole thing I would change. I probably would have practiced a little more, to be honest. Um, I probably would have gone through with 
uh, I probably would have added more details into my design or just uh, included a little bit more and worked on my sketches a bit further and tested out more ideas. I don't think I've included as many ideas as I could have. I think personally, I would have done a little bit more research on the company that I was working with because I feel like that really helps to understand what you want to include in your designs when you're making them. Hi, I'm Mark Deslon, uh, a uh, part of the the Chemester for Pack 202. Uh, I want to say that the designs that we had to uh, pick from from each stage, it was really hard to pick which ones we liked the best. They were really great, and I appreciate all all of your work. Um, I I do have a a question for the the group. I was curious if so as a client, I want to make sure I'm providing the right amount of information uh, for you guys to make a good design. Did you run into any cases where the clients provided too much information, therefore hindering your artistic vision or not enough information, leaving you at a loss and how you might have adjusted for that? Personally, I struggled with the design that we chose first because I had issues with the coloration and each of the designs had to have the same color. So since Grayson had used fire in his, we were gonna go with orange, but then orange didn't work with Josie's or mine. So we, we struggled a lot with the coloration of the um, Cub Scouts. I would say that the work that you gave us already in the beginning really helped us to develop the design that we wanted to kind of go in the direction with. Because without that, I think we would have been completely lost. So with getting information, obviously life happens. And when we first had our initial call with the client, she told us beforehand that she was very pregnant and would be in labor soon. So because of that, there was some communication that we just had to take the initiative on our own. For our thumbnails, we were the ones who chose which ones we'd develop into Illustrator. But between emailing her once she was able to, we got a lot of information back and then we refined it to the final logo. All right, first off, I want to say congratulations. I think you guys did an awesome job. Uh, during our sophomore year, we had a similar project like you guys are doing right now. And my question is, uh, how did you guys decide on your like local businesses that you wanted to do? Because compared to ours, you guys had a lot of different like varieties of businesses. So I'm curious. So um, this year, we were actually given our look our businesses our teachers had planned them out originally and then put us to teams based off our skills so we had like different skills for each business but i think we had a really good turnout like just being given business ideas but we also corresponded by giving them businesses that we probably like thought might want a logo but in the end our teachers decided our final business corporations sorry of course i just want to say you guys did amazing like everyone else has said of course it's a really hard thing to do to come up here and present in front of everybody um your projects turned out really well and like i can tell you guys put a lot of work into them so i was just wondering how long um of like class time and stuff you guys actually like spent on these because honestly when we did it i 
do not remember at all. And like you could tell me you spent three months on it and I would completely believe you because it looks like you spent that amount of time on it. I can say that this took a lot of time. Uh, every day in class was probably, it felt like five hours when it was really only an hour and a half. So we were just constantly working on this, working on editing, uh, fixing logos, changing different things, uh, working with Mr. Petty to see what he sees in it, and also contacting our clients to see what they liked about it and what they didn't. I would also like to add that um, throughout mainly November, um, we had we we had like um, not the usual five day school day we had time where it was like two days of school and then we wouldn't be able to work on the stuff that we needed to that was on the computers in middle in mr petty's classroom and so we were limited in time with that part but we all were able to get it done um like sarah said we were initially given four weeks but there was a lot of days taken out of that. So we had to work around that or sometimes work from home. We had definitely had to practice at home and it was a struggle, but we made it through. I know I personally, there were some days where I came in and since we had it first period, we uh, I would sometimes come into school and immediately like log into me and Haley's computers because we did have some technical issues. So that uh, with our computers, so that kind of backed up everything. So sometimes I would just log on to both computers and just start working from there because at, at designing a trailer wrap, that took a long time. So I had to start immediately. You kind of had to do double time, you know, first and fourth block. Uh, you know, in one day we're in the same classroom and first and fourth. And I hope it'll probably take a little while before I start walking to the same classroom that I walked to before this project, but alas. We have someone who has raised their hand. If you want to unmute and ask your question, Mr. Monado will get that set up. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, can I go ahead and ask my question? Yes, of course. Okay, um, so this is Autumn Hutchinson for All Seasons Homes, the one that had the baby. Um, so first I wanted to congratulate you guys. You guys did an amazing job to go from someone who was at multiple appointments and then the baby came and not have much to go off of. Um, my husband and I are very pleased um, with the design and we do plan to implement it and use it um, on our business cards, um, our letterheads, t-shirts and everything. As you know, we are a, a very new company, just about three years in this far and had no um, logo at all. Um, so thank you guys so much for being patient and flexible and so responsive, and you did an amazing job with all of your designs. So I appreciate all of your help and time and patience. And then I also wanted to say that this live stream was amazing. Um, this is one of the best live streams that I've had from huge, large companies. Sometimes they can't get it all together. And I think this was just very well planned and very well organized. And that is all of my comments. So thanks again to all of you. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we really enjoyed working with you. Thanks. Okay, so we have one question in the chat and then a lot of wonderful comments. So the question in here says, what was it like working in teams when you had different visions for one design? So for our team specifically, we ended up going in a lot of different directions with our thumbnails and ideas. But we eventually just came together and talked about each one and what we liked about each one, whether it was a line or a shape that we liked. And we started incorporating them all together until we found something that we all liked. Uh, kind of going off of what Chloe said, uh, for our group, we had like 15 sheets of paper just of all the sides of what 
just kind of throwing our ideas on paper. So after we had that figured out, we combined different concepts from each of ours to see what we liked and what we didn't. And again, looked at our inspiration for ideas and communicated with Mr. Bittner as well. So yeah, that helped a lot. Uh, one thing that helped in my group, especially, we all talked as we were making our designs. So anything that we were questionable about our own designs, we just asked and they'd say if they liked it, if they didn't like it, what they would change, what they would keep. And overall, that helped uh, produce our final logos that we send to our clients. Okay, so right now we do not have any more questions, but there are some wonderful comments in here talking specifically about some groups and about how wonderful your public speaking is to be so young. Um, it's always exciting to see the creative process and outstanding results. Um, Mr. Hood has thanked everyone for their hard work and dedication on his team. He said, I know it was not easy, so my hat is off to all. Just lots of people saying that this is very impressive. Um, and that you guys did such a wonderful job. Um, my dad commented for you guys. Um, and he said that he's very impressed with the quality of the presentations and the work product. Congratulations to the student and staff that worked on them. This would have been impressive to production if it had been put on by college seniors. So very good job there. And then lots of compliments on the production back there. So. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, this is Ben first. I'm also online. I uh, appreciate the presentation to everybody who, who presented today. Um, I'm actually a former uh, Digital Media Academy instructor. I'm so glad to come back a few years later and see what the program has become. It's been super impressive watching everything today. Um, I had one final question for everybody on stage. Now that you're on the other side, you're finished with this project, I'd like to hear a couple of you verbalize what is like one final takeaway that you got from this what's gonna remain with you as you continue on to more projects and more internships and interaction with the community? I know I just specifically learned a lot of skills in design and creating different things. Um, I will definitely just remember this experience because it was a lot of hard work. And I also learned how to uh, communicate with clients, which I definitely think will be something that'll be useful later down the line. <laughs> Um, to add on to that, I really think that it just helped working with a team. Like you just get to know people so well with working with them for a month and just going through all that. It just really helps with, again, learning how to communicate with clients and also your peers. One of my takeaways was, you know, working with a client, of course, you know, working with teams, communicating with people managing stress and workload and it's just been a overall really wonderful experience and i learned a lot from it um for me it will definitely be presenting especially in a crowd in front of people because last year when we did it virtually it was a lot easier for me but doing it up on stage was a lot harder and i'm glad that i did it the best way that i could so One thing that I would say is when in doubt, practice it one more time. This entire week was nothing except practicing. And even still, we would practice it one more time. Like Mr. Petty said, you don't practice it until you don't get it wrong. You practice it till you can't get it wrong anymore. Does anyone have any more questions for us? Okay, again, I'm so proud of you guys for all that you have done. I had these kids last year as freshmen and the growth and improvement is insane from last year. So I'm very proud of you guys for what you have accomplished. Can we have one more round of applause for you young men and women up here, please? Awesome job, awesome, awesome job. Just want to express one more time, for those of you who might not know me, I'm Mr. Petty and Mr. Silva. Um, we were honored to work with these young men and women and these businesses that um, allowed us the opportunity 
Um, I'd first like to thank Mr. Silva for getting the word out there to everybody and for all the support from the community, from so many people that did respond. Like she said, we got more responses than we had students to be able to work with. So we were really excited about the, the opportunities that were out there. And then for these guys, you know, Grace asked a question about how long it was. It was four weeks. It was four weeks of, of two 90 minute periods a day with several days kind of getting chunked out between holidays and teacher work days and uh, mental health days and all the other things that were in the calendar during that four week time period. And to see where, where we came from, right? If, if you look at where the initial sketches were to then how they evolved to the thumbnails and then how they evolved to the logos and the t-shirt designs and the graphical wraps that you saw, tremendous growth from everybody on stage right here from beginning to end. You know, and you were asked about the, the experiences of what you had and you take that forward the life skills, again, of communication, right? Of being able to communicate via email. They had telephone conversations. That's difficult. Kids don't talk on the phone anymore. They text everything and they do it in social media. So to actually talk to an adult is kind of scary, right? And so to do that, you know, professionally learn those skill sets is something they take beyond here. And the ability to work in teams is something they take beyond here. And these guys are sophomores. They just getting started. They just getting started. So. It's going to continue to get better and better. We are so proud of these young men and women and everything that they've accomplished up here. Very, very proud of you guys. The public speaking, again, sophomores. Again, just going to continue to get better and better. And there's no piece of paper. There's no script. You know, they rehearsed, they practiced, and they were ready. And they did a great job. So really, really proud of you guys. Yeah, again, I'd like to thank all of you uh, for being here both in person and virtually. Um, I cannot say um, I'm just so proud of all of these students. Um, and I have to give props to Mr. Petty. I was out all week sick. It's my first day back. And I came back, and they are polished and uh, poised and did such a phenomenal job. So thank you, Mr. Petty. And thank you guys for being so awesome. Um, and thank you to our local business owners, um, to our parents who support us, to our administration. Um, we, we couldn't do it without you. Go ahead one more time. All right, that officially concludes our presentations. You can all make it out, parents and business people, before the buses get you caught in traffic. Those of you guys that are here from the Academy from other classes, you guys can hang tight for another minute. Thank you guys for coming. We appreciate it. Take care.